time for some epic biology gameplay. Okay, fine, maybe, maybe not gameplay, but you guys have been asking for some Yusubo walkthroughs, let's try it out. Hello everybody, I'm Kara, and today we're going to be doing the 2012 Yusubo Open Exam, and honestly, I have no idea how a Yusubo walkthrough is going to be, because like, most of it is just random knowledge in my head, so I'll try to explain my logic, I feel like it might not be that helpful, but we'll see. Alright, let's do it. 50 minutes on the clock. <laughs> Oops, I actually typed it, let's do it, okay, 50 minutes time, and we're good, so... Rank them in order of how readily they diffuse across the plasma membrane. So basically, smaller molecules are better, and hydrophobic molecules are better. So, we know that CO2 is pretty small and it's pretty hydrophobic. Alright, and then we know that Cl- is small, but it's hydrophilic, so that's going to be next. And then sucrose and glycerol are both hydrophilic, um, but glycerol is like smaller, so it should be next. So it should be 1, 2, 4, 3. Well, that's not even an option. Well, I'm not exactly sure. Hmm. So most diffusible, so it's for sure one. So it's either A or D, and then I'm like 99% sure that two is not. Wait, why is two last? Oh, maybe it's because there's an ion. Ions are very okay. So if it's if that's not true, then I think three is before four. So I think we're gonna go with A. Wait, wait, no, no, I meant 4 is before 3 because glycerol is a lot smaller than sucrose. So D, actually. D, not A. Alright, D. 2. Alright, so we perform western blot on two things with similar molecular weights, and then there's only one band, okay? So basically, in a western blot, you're basically doing gel electrophoresis on proteins, and if they have the same molecular weights, it's basically they're going to go the same distance. So if we use lower concentration of primalide, that's not going to change anything because that's just going to like, they're still going to go the same distance. Use a non-ionic uh, detergent, we don't want to, it doesn't matter if we denature it, but if we do it based on pH gradient, then that might change it. Okay, like the thing I think about the pH gradient is because like if the, the uh, protein probably have different isoelectric points, which basically like it's just a property of protein, so if we are able to separate them isoelectrically, it's very unlikely that they have the same point, so I think we're going to go with C for two. Alright, tiny hairs on a gecko's toe allows it to blah blah blah. Hydrophobic keratin, okay, and van der Waals interaction. So which one are you least likely to find? So basically, the way you do this is you try to find the one that's not hydrophobic, and the only one that's not hydrophobic over here is serine, because you can see the OH group, so we're going with serine. Alright, when found on the extracellular side, which of the following is a marker for phagocytosis of apoptotic cells? I honestly have no idea, but let's see. Okay, so phosphatidylcholine is always found on the outer thing, so that's fine. I'm assuming that all the phospholipids are also fine. So I'm just going to go with B, because usually phospholipids are found in a uh, cell membrane, so those should be fine. Also, glycolipids are always found, like, outside of cell membrane, so those are chill. Okay, so the presence of which is following amino acids. Okay, so a really good thing to know for Yusubo is all the amino acids, because if you know them, then you could get all these questions right. So, basically the channel region of aquaporins is hydrophilic, so it lets water through, so anything that's hydrophilic should work. So, tryptophan, oh, what, there's a lot of them, huh, okay. So, we can immediately rule out A, D, and E. So it's either tryptophan or asparagine. I mean, no, no, tryptophan is not polar, so I guess it's just asparagine, so C. There's really a diagram in the book, so just memorize the diagram and you should be chilling. Okay. So, okay. Okay, so Sudan, okay, so Sudan I know is for lipids, so two should have lipids because it's the only one that's different from all of them. So which ones have two as glycerin? Okay, wait. All of them are lipids though, so I guess we can't do that. Um, let's see. So ninhydrin is for fingerprints, which should be for like proteins and stuff. So whichever one's proteins should be beaker one. So that eliminates D and E. So we're looking at A, B, and C, and then burette is for. Wait, isn't burette for proteins? Okay, I'm pretty sure uh, burette is also for proteins. So. So maybe burette should also have protein. Because Benedict's is for sugar. Okay, four is always a sugar, bruh. Um, okay, whatever. I'm gonna go with, um, 
I'm gonna go with A or B, so I'm gonna go with A. Not sure how to do this one exactly. Alright, so there's some rare organisms that do not have lipid bilayers, but instead have lipid monolayers. So which of the following is a plausible structure? So if I have monolayers, you would need a hydrophilic on both ends. So we need something that's hydrophilic on both ends. So the first one's not gonna work, the second one's not gonna work because that's hydrophobic everywhere. This one's not gonna work. Oh, D looks nice because you have hydrophilic over here, hydrophilic over there. Epic. And then this one only has one end. Okay, so it should be D. One of your classmates has symptoms of protein deficiency. You suspect that you might have a mineral deficiency because... <laughs> nice, canned spaghetti. I respect that real good. Okay, so which mineral should you check? So I think... Which of the one is necessary for amino acids? I'm pretty sure sulfur is like a common thing for amino acids. I haven't memorized the mineral stuff yet. That is a good thing to memorize right before the competition. So I'm gonna go with E. All right, so a new therapeutic drug can treat demyelinating multiple sclerosis by blocking voltagated potassium channel. Neuron action potential conduction improves. Okay, so basically in potassium channels in neurons, basically what they do is they stop an action potential from progressing. So if you're blocking it, less is allowed. So the resting leak does not change because it's voltage gated, so that's only during the potential. So less is allowed to leave. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's C. So basically voltage gated sodium channels just shut off after a certain amount of time. So it's not going to prevent the inactivation or anything, so it's basically going to be D. So diffusion coefficient, gradient for diffusion, surface area. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we have like, um, comparable surface area. Because we have plenty of surface, oh, I guess we might not have as much. So E is for sure not right. D, no. Okay, might be surface area. Diffusion coefficient, no, I'm doubting that. And then gradient. I think we're going to go with C actually, in fact. Pollen grains were treated with colchicine and okay, so basically colchicine is like a microtubule inhibitor, so let's see. But I don't know what microtubules play in pollen grain. So you can't so the pollen grain can't divide or something? Could it get to the thing? So it's either haploid and sterile or dihaploid. What the heck is dihaploid? Isn't it diploid? Okay, I think we should be fine because the XL still have stuff, so maybe it's B. I think it might be B. Okay. 12. What are the following statements about seeds? Coleoriza are found in monocotyledonous seeds. So this is basically a root cap. So I'm pretty sure that should... That might not be right because, like, monocots basically have, like, ta fibrous roots, so they don't have, like, a main tap root. Okay, yeah, both have radicals for sure have a pericarp. Is pericarp? No, what? Wait, I'm like 99% sure pericarp is like the wall of the fruit, not the wall of the seed. Okay, we're gonna go with C, cause that seems wrong. Well, okay, this is kind of weird. Yeah, I don't know. Clothing of leaves and fl or flowers and nut. Okay, I literally feel like it's just gonna be Nick. Okay, what? Dude, it's just roots. Latin roots. Bruh. Okay, what is the following is true about carnivorous plants? All of them are angiosperms. All of them evolved for nutrient poor environments. All are limited to small arthropods. All have mechanisms to capture and attract prey. I feel like A is probably wrong, right? Wait, could carnivorous plants eat bigger things? I think, I think they could, right? Hmm, I think A seems like it's the least likely to be correct. Okay, 15. Okay, this one's just a man, it's like cation exchange, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so when they're filled with water and turgid, it's closed, that's wrong. Cellulose micro are on the longer axis. So if they're along the longer axis and you blow them up, yeah, that makes sense. After a certain point, somato closure is irreversible. I doubt it. D. Oh, wait, yeah, so if you take up, yeah, if you take up ions, then you're going to get more water in, which causes it open, yeah, so it's D. 17. Uh, I don't see how sepals have anything to do with pollination, what the heck? Yeah, what, bruh, D. The UV light thing, I'm pretty sure it's for bees and stuff, so that should be fine. Okay, so the zygomycete, so it does form a zygosporangia. So basically, what zygomycetes do is they, like, once their food source is depleted, they make like a stalk, a fruiting body, and then they release their spores from there. Bruh. <coughs> I'm dying. Yeah, so basically they release their spores once they run out of stuff. So, it should be A. Okay, so conidia is only for ascomycetes. 
so that's not right. And then mycelia increase the rate of asexual production? No, because you don't want to just make more absorbing stuff that you know there's nothing left to absorb. No, no, no. Okay, so A. 19. So epinephrine does stimulate glucose production because you want more glucose in your body when you're running because glucose is a lot easier to metabolize than glycogen. So that makes sense. Basically when you're trying to decide what epinephrine does, just anything that you do when you're active basically. And then mineral corticoid, increased blood pressure and volume, debatable. Glucocorticoids, uh, bruh. Okay, that's right. Okay, E is wrong. Okay, so literally ACTH stands for adrenocorticotropic hormone. And basically that stimulates the adrenal cortex to, stim uh, to release stuff, not the medulla, so it should be that. Okay, 20. Okay, so anterior growth hormone, yes. Pro uh, prolactin, yes. C, no, because antidiuretic hormone is repeated by the posterior, so it should be C, okay. Uh, okay. Good to know. How am I supposed to know? Okay, so vitamin D has to do with your bones, so this guy doesn't seem like it's particularly problem with their bones. Ascorbic acid is like skin problems, which might be it. Yeah, wait, straight up? Yeah, I would go with C actually. Yeah, the other one. Luckily, okay, B1 has something called beriberi, but I don't know the symptoms for that, so I'm gonna go with C. I need to review the minerals chapter. There's a minerals and vitamins chapter in Campo, and if you just memorize that before the competition, you can get all these questions it's so much easier. Okay, so respiration, just chorion, so C, nice. 23. What are the primary source of food up to five days post- Bruh, just yolk, yolk sac, right? <laughs> Larval fish food place, bruh. Okay, good, yeah, yeah, A. Dude, some of the answers are really big brain and usable. I just made this up. I respect that. Cause the following symptoms. Overly fragile bone fatigue, bone pain, and abnormal EKG with a short QT interval and long T- Bruh. Okay, whatever. So there's a bunch of random stuff. Constipation and- Huh. So basically, it's making you more fatigued. So I'm assuming it's something that's gonna reduce your metabolism. So bone pain, overly fragile. Okay, so basically parathyroid hormone like stimulates your bones breaking down. So it should be B. And also slows down your metabolism. So B seems legit. Huh, which is false? Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm pretty sure that A has nothing to do with it. Why does, why would having an artery surrounded by veins make P exchange more efficient? B is right, coolest blood. So it goes, it gets, gets cooled, it gets cooled, it gets cooled, it goes up, and then it gets heated. Yeah, because it wants the ones that are closer to the body to be warmer, so it makes sense that the coolest blood is at the tip, okay? Only ones? That seems so not true, but... Wait, yeah, what? Dude, rabbits use counter current heat exchange to, like, warm up their ears or some nonsense, so... 25D. Epic. Uh, how am I supposed to know what cells these are? What the heck? Okay, this is random purple thing. I don't know whether this is a platelet or something. Okay, I don't feel like these are sperm. Um, let's see any flagella in there. 100 micrometers seems pretty reasonable for a human egg, so I don't think it's gonna be frog egg or frog blood smear. Yeah, I'm gonna go with B. B seems legit. 27. Okay, I am pretty sure. Wait, I forget if the ascending limb or the descending limb has aquaporin. Okay, I'm pretty sure that, like, okay, it's not B. I'm pretty sure it's triple. I'm pretty sure you do active transport the pump in the ascending limb. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's C or A, but C seems more legit. That makes a lot more sense, so C. 20. So jaundice means a bile synthesis, bilirubin, and bilirubin. So A and B is for sure directly impacted. Albumin, what does albumin have to do with anything? Okay, erythropoietin has nothing to do with it because that is not produced by the liver, that is by the kidney. So this should be good. 28D. Everything else is a function of the kidney. Um, hmm. Okay, so. I'm pretty sure it's right atrium because they have like the thickest wall and like it's the biggest section. I'm pretty sure some. I think I'm bad. Think I'm not sure, but A A should make sense. Okay, 29A 30. What are the primary mechanisms? Okay, so ADH means antidiuretic, which means you have less concentrated. No, more concentrated urine. So if you make okay, so no, it's not going to be by the podocytes because that's like filtration. It doesn't affect filtration. It has to do with the collecting duct. So, D seems right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's D, okay. Okay, so non-associative learning? That's kind of interesting actually, but non-associative is not operant. So it's either habituation or fixed action pattern. Oh wait, yeah, straight up fixed action pattern because fixed action pattern means they see a stimulus and then they have to do it. So these fish came up, they look like they're chicks, so it gotta be a fixed action pattern. So C, 32. All right, so habituation is like you get 
have it something, right? This doesn't seem right. This does not seem right. This might... No, this is... This is... I actually have no idea what the situation is, honestly. Okay, this is a good thing to know, though. This comes up a lot, so I should probably review. But I think it should be C. C seems... Uh, is that awkward, though? Okay, I think it's C. Let's go to C. Okay, so basically, this is just like something I didn't know. This is like a altruism thing, which it talks about in the ecology chapter. So it's just kin selection, basically. The logic behind it is like, if you want to protect your kin, because then you're going to pass on your own genes. So like in the military, if you're a part of a brotherhood, you want to protect your kin, you're more likely to fight harder or whatever. This thing's saying, how are we doing on time? 25 minutes epic. All right, 34. Has alleles R and R for pointed and round leaves, B and B for white petals, because homozygous, dominant homozygous recessive, and then their cross splits homozygous recessive again. Okay, so basically, all of your offspring from the first generation are gonna be heterozygous, like, they're gonna be, wait, they're gonna be R, R, B, B. All of them are gonna be like that. Okay, and then you cross it with the R, R, B, B. Okay, so basically the way you do this is you, find out all the pairs of alleles they could have. So you could have RB, you could have R little b, you could have a little b, big b, and then you could have a little, you could have a little r, little b. And then the other one has to give a RB because it's homozygous recessive. So if we do this out, we get R, R, B, B. We have a R, R, little b, little b, and then we have a R, R, B, B, and then we have R, R, B. So basically each of these uh, different Phenotype is gonna have, um, or genotype is gonna have a tw uh, 25%. So, should be around 400 of everything. Wait, what? Wait, all of these are equally likely. What the heck? Is this me, me, me? Oh, oh, re oh, they're linked? Bruh, wait, this is troll. Okay, so, in the parent, huh. Well, anyway, so, in the parent, so, okay, let's just write out the parents, let's see. So, we have RRBB and RRBB. So these are the desired, these are the parents, and if you have a recombination rate of 25%, that means that 25% of the offspring will have different phenotypes of these dudes. So, are all of these the same? Yeah, okay, so basically you want these two, which are different, to be 25%. So in, that, in this case, it should add to 400. So this one works, so E works, and then, yeah, only E works, so I guess we're going with E. Oh, bro. Okay, so basically we just want to find the ones that don't fly. So, um, galliforms is like chickens, so I'm pretty sure they won't, they do, they do fly. Pissiforms? I'm, I remember something about that not being flying. I feel like that's not a flying thing. I, I've not studied bird, like, clades or anything, so I'm just gonna go with A. <laughs> Watch the underlying one be the answer, because they forgot to like, erase it, but whatever. I, I think we got this. Alright, so, independent origin of microfills and megafills. So, basically microfills are, like, the smaller leaves and megafills are the bigger leaves. So A is true, B is false, C is true. So it, to prove independent origin, there has to be like some difference between the two. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be A because like size is obviously not a distinguisher between origins because some mammals are like way bigger than others. So like, I think it should be A, 36A. Okay, male child with Klinefelter syndrome is basically XYY. Okay, no, no, XXY. So if he has, uh, X-linked recessive means that he has to have gotten an X-linked... Wait, what? How could he have got two? XXY is Kleinfelter's, so that means he would have to get... Both of them from his mother? But if he got both of them from his mother, his mother would have non-normal vision. Oh, but one of them could be deactivated. Oh, maybe that's why. So his mom guaranteed to give him an F. His dad might not. Wait, so failure of X inactivation would be good. Because if it's not inactivated, then the recessive won't show up. If the father had non disjunction you would get X and Y from him. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's from the mothers. You get two mothers ones, and that's why one of them gets deactivated. So we're gonna go with mothers. So my X is one, with it into... Oh, oh. So, so you get... Okay, yeah, so it should be non disjunction during um, my X is two, so B. Because during my X is two is one, like the same chromosome splits into two. So like if you get two of the same X, then you might have the recessive alleal twice. <clears throat> so they do have amniotic eggs, they both have an autocar, bidirectional breathing. Okay, they're both endothermic, they both have a four-chambered heart. So, see, but what's that because bi- Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Because birds have like a cycle, 
Humans have bidirectional, but circles have, uh, birds have a different thing. 39, which of the following is not true about alpaca? That basically means the different places they like separate geologically. So it's more rare. I feel that like that's not true. It can be caused by, uh, no? Okay, C is wrong. Alpaca by definition is literally they're in different places. So I don't see what the, like how, yeah, this just doesn't make sense, okay. 40. Wait, dude, there's been no, like plant file at all basically interesting okay so what's not like okay so some a lot of usables have a lot of plant files so do not skip that chapter but in this one for some reason none okay what is the following is not true about genetic drift can cause okay that's true can cause a little freak yes significant and small yes can lead to a loss of genetic yes prevents allele frequency bruh what <laughs> okay <laughs> Genetic drift literally means by chance, so like, what? Prevent frequencies from fluctuating? Okay. So, Turner syndrome, but just by definition, is XO, so it should be A. Okay, so 32% is guanine. Pyrimidines, okay, the way to remember it is pure as gold. So, pyrimidines are the other two, which is thymine and cytosine. So, basically, that means 32% are guanine, and that means 32% are also cytosine. And that means that the other... So that means 64% are purines, so that means the other 40 some what? No, what? Wait. So 32% of bases are guanine. Then you need 32% to be cytosine, right? Oh, oh, so 32, and then there's also going to be 40, 23%, no, no, sorry. There's going to be 18% that are adenine. No, no, 32, bro, okay, so 32% cytosine and 18% thymine. So you add them together and you get 50. Oh, just in general, I guess that's a rule, yeah. Okay, this is really gonna be Cambrian, so you just gotta mem memorize this, like, first off, it's the Cambrian explosion, so that's why all the major body plans, and second off, like, 500 million years ago is Cambrian, so that should be fine. B. Okay, 44. Okay, so basically the way that the island model works is if you have a bigger island, people are more likely to end up on it. But if you're farther away from the mainland, you're less likely to end up on it. So you gotta balance it too. So basically, if X has a greater number, that means it's bigger and it's closer to the main, or it's the same. So A should work. No. Mm, X is, no. Okay, so it's gonna be A. Yeah. 44A, 45. What is it calling? Not a, uh, adaptation? Oh, nice, a plant file. Okay, so they have basal, no? Wait, seriously? Oh, wait, they do. Okay, yeah, so that seems right. Wait, yeah. This seems so, I don't know, okay. It also seems wrong. Dude, I have no idea. Okay, C seems wrong. Kind of. Yeah, I was gonna go with C, I don't have no idea. 46. Uh, okay, so A is clearly not wrong. I mean, clearly wrong. And then B. So, yeah, B B seems right. C, no, I'm pretty sure it's B. Yeah, B seems way righter than anything else. Okay, 47. Oh, wait, shoot, B and C is an option. Oh, yeah, because, no, but they usually have, like, plenty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure B is the main reason. Okay, 47. Males of a tropical bird species spend six months of the year jumping around in a small area of blah, 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 blah. They don't contribute anything other than sperm to the production of algae. Which is the following? Okay. Okay, A seems right. Okay, B is quite clearly not right. Wait, C might be right. Okay, D is not right and E is not right. Okay, yeah, C seems right. Let's do it with that. 48. Okay, so peacock's tail, yes, is secondary. Reproduction of organ- Bruh. <laughs> Okay, reproductive organs by definition is gonna be your primary sexual character, so alright. Uh, e seems troll too, but I know for a fact that B is wrong. Okay. You observe an animal in early, early stages of development, the zygote divides radially into eight cells. Wait! Yeah, okay, okay, we're good, we're good. I'm pretty sure. Okay, that might be. I don't know, whatever. Okay, you observe zygote divide radially. If you separate these early cells, one can. And it's cool, okay. Okay, so basically that means that is, um, this basically says it's deuterostone, and this basically says it's not a, yeah, okay, yeah, it is quite clearly deuterostone, so C seems right. Deuterostones are, like, really closer to chordata and stuff, so the closest one to us is C, C urchins, so we're gonna go with C. Also, the rest of them are, like, really related to each other, and, like, C is the odd one out, so you should be good with that, and then 50. Bruh, okay, Insecta, wait, what? Insecta is literally defined as like open circuit. Okay, whatever, yeah, that's good. 10 minutes left, whatever, let's check our answers. And, oh, that's the wrong answer key. Answer, all right, okay, let's do this. D, C, E, 
Okay. Nope. I have no idea. I don't know how to do this one. Okay. 5C. A. Nope. I have no idea how to do this one either, but I need to review, like, these kind of Benedict burettes. It's also important for science bowl, so I guess I should know that anyways. Alright, D. Makes sense. E. Good. C. Yes. That's a 10. What did I put a 10? Oh, I put... Okay, that makes sense. Kind of. Yeah. Alright, and then 11. Nice, because we decided it wouldn't affect anything. Okay, sure. Sure. Okay, 13 with troll. Did we put that 14? Oh, no. Unfortunate. And then... That. That. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nope. 21. Nice. Okay, I remember, like, this is, like, a diagram, so if I, like, if you just memorize the diagram, it should be fine. And then... What? No. Oh. Bruh, okay, so basically, Allantoy is for removal of waste, but it's also... Oh, come on. So troll. Okay, whatever. 23, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we got that. Aw, oh, What? How am I supposed to know the difference between frog blood and human blood? 26 is wrong. Yep. Yep. Nope. I don't know how that works. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Kin selection. Nice. Blue. Nope, I have no idea what Spruce Nini forms are. Okay, I'm gonna search that up real quick. Let's do that. Spruce Nini Mio forms. I didn't spell that right. Theani forms. Oh my god. Okay, I know what rat types are. Okay, I know what these noobs are. Okay, I know what these guys are. What the heck? Why would you call them Struthio D forms? Why would you call them rat types? Oh my god. Okay, you know what? Whatever. We're good. I was literally looking for the answer because I knew that like rat types is literally defined as the, all the flight whispers. But I couldn't, I didn't know which one it was. Okay. A, yes sir. B, yes sir. C, okay. I did not know 39. Okay. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, sir, yes sir, no. 45, no. Alright, nope. Uh, 40, we got that right. Yeah. Oh, what? No. <laughs> okay, nope. And then, they are secondary. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so how many do we get wrong? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 37, that's not even bad, okay. Alright, hope that was helpful. Uh, I don't know whether it was because I was kind of just like spouting nonsense that I remember from the textbook, but anyway, that's how I approach you still. That's how we do it. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.